Hello, my name is Brad, and in this little tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to take some unique photos with your 1970s Kodak Instamatic camera. Before you begin, you're going to want to make sure that your Instamatic camera works. If the shutter is rusted shut, then don't go through all this stuff, or it's just going to be a tremendous waste of your time. Is open this guy up and point it towards a light source and look for a flash of light coming through. It's kind of a 50-50 chance whether this video camera shutter catches this camera shutter. There we go. Uh, they stopped making the film for these many years ago. It used to take a 35 millimeter sized cartridge of film, um, but it came in a, a cartridge, kind of like 110 film, and had a paper backing. Um, with numbers on it. So as you see, there's a little window here where you used to be able to see the, uh, the exposure number on the paper backing. First thing you're going to want to do is black that out or it's going to ruin all of your photos. I'm going to take a little one inch photo black tape here and just really black that thing out. If you don't have photo black, you can use uh, a couple layers of electrician's tape or something like that just so that it's completely opaque and black and doesn't come off or leak light on the back of your photos or you're going to ruin all of them. All right, so that's done. Uh, the next step here is we're going to modify a 35 millimeter cartridge to fit in this guy. So as you'll see, there's a little film advance mechanism here that used to interface with the cartridge and as you advance it, it turns. And then get a shutter release turns again. So basically what we're going to do is cut a notch in our modern 35 millimeter film canister that interfaces with this little guy right here and then uh, then go in the dark and pack all the film all over to the other side of the camera. All right. So modern 35 millimeter film has uh, these two little tabs here that work with the rewind mechanism in, in modern 35 millimeter cameras when you wind it all back into the can when you're done shooting it. Um, it's easiest to cut a notch in here if you do it perpendicular to those two so you don't run into them. So get yourself a nice sharp knife and cut a little V-shaped notch kind of deep into this. You could also use a Dremel or something would work well as long as you don't get a bunch of uh, <laughs> little particles into your film can. All right, great. So there's a little notch. I think that's going to work. So this part you can do in the light. I'm just going to pull out a little bit of leader and then jam this in here right in line with the, uh, with the notches on this little film take-up mechanism. There you go. Great. And then with the light still on, I'm going to test it and make sure that when I advance it, there's some slack in inside the film can right now. Give myself a, a leg up here by twisting out a lot of that slack ahead of time. Yeah, that's tight. Okay, so that should start pulling the film back in. I just want to confirm that it's working now before we go into the darkroom. And I can feel it pulling the film back into the can. Great. Uh, you'll notice, and this comes up when you go to develop your film, you'll see this as well, that it does not pull the film an even amount, depending on how much it's already in the can, and it does not pull it for a full frame. You're going to end up with lots and lots of layered exposures, which is kind of the cool part. You never know what you're going to get. You also get somewhere between, let's say, 40 and 80 shutter releases in a roll of film. All right. So that looks pretty good. One other tip that I've come up with is I like to take one of the little tabs off a of film box and jam it under the can so that it stays locked into that top pickup mechanism so that it's not, not moving the film and you aren't actually taking any photos because there's no real way to know what's going on with this thing when you're out there. Make this a little better size. This dry fitting, you can do all of this with the lights on, which makes it a lot easier. Please don't try to cut your notches in the dark. Great, that fits great. So now, 
what you are going to do is go find somewhere completely, completely dark and get all your tools set out in front of you and ready to go and, uh, you know, maybe memorize where the nearest light switch is for after you're finished. I am going to sacrifice this terrible expired roll of film in order to show you guys how to do this. All right, so set my things where I can feel them in the dark, just like anybody who's worked at a uh, film loader or something before. All right, so everything's on there. Goes completely pitch black for you. I'm gonna leave the lights on. So what I found is best to not, to get the fewest amount of fingerprints on the emulsion side and get the best photos, is I'm going to start winding this out of the can into a loop and I'm gonna keep my loop right next to the film can rather than, would it work if you pulled it all out arm to arm? Absolutely, and you could roll it back up. I found this to be kind of like the neatest, fastest method and also then you don't scratch it or get greasy little fingerprints on the emulsion side when you're in the dark. So I'm making myself a tight little loop here. I'm just gonna do this until all the film's out of the can and in this little roll. I'm keeping a little tension on both the film can and my roll because otherwise this stuff will jack in the box on you and become a big curly cue which is hard to fix in the dark without getting smudges on the emulsion side. It's a 36 exposure roll, so it takes a little longer than a, than a 24. There you go, got it all. I feel it's real tight right up to the core there. So what I'm gonna do, and this is in the dark, pitch black, I'm trying to feel where this little, this little bar is on the inside here on the take up side and then feel where my little notches are and without letting my roll go loose, put this guy in here, try and line them up. You might need to pop the shutter once or twice to get it in a good position. That looks like a good lineup. It feels like a good lineup when you're in complete darkness. All right, I'm just gonna, just like we practiced, line up my little tabs. All right, in it goes. Keep my little roll tight and jam it over here. And made my little shim just to keep everything snug inside this camera. And then keeping a little pressure on the roll side I am gonna put my finger right here where the film starts going back into the can and test it. And it's going great. I can see that the film's advancing. Perfect, that's gonna, that's gonna hunt. All right, so put that in there. Close her up. Great, all right, now you can turn the lights back on. The charming, tricky part of using a plastic toy camera like this basically is you have no idea what's going on inside it for the most part. What I found is the best way to tell if it's turning, if it's working, is to, after you take a shot, listen to the side of the camera and you can hear the film squeaking and pulling across the pressure plate back into the can. I can actually hear the film scraping along uh, inside of the camera and back into the can when I do that, which is great. Also, testing it in the darkness, very important as well, because it's, um, it's a little bit tricky to get things in there, but not rocket science, and they look really cool. You tend to get a lot of light leaks on these because they were made for a cartridge. There's just like gaps all over the body and stuff, so if you want a little cleaner image, take a little more of your photo black tape and tape up the seams after you've loaded it. Uh, also, I feel like you get light leaks through this film advance knob here. Also, um, put some photo black on there. Cover it up with your hand when you're in the sun advancing it if you like. Or just go for it and see what happens. After approximately 40 to 80 shutter releases, if you're still listening, you should stop hearing the film squeak back across the plate because it's all sucked all the way back up into the can again. That's actually a good tip that I forgot to do is you can fold the film leader up a little bit so that as it's being pulled back in, you know that the roll's finished and don't keep shooting photos of nothing while the film's all gone. 
And then when it's all done, it's all sucked right back into the can. You can open it right up in daylight and remove your can of exposed film and then go get it developed. A couple of shooting tips. Um, vary the size of the shot. Wide shot on wide shot on wide shot doesn't look as good as when you incorporate details of places in with wide shots. Also, because you're doing so much uh, double exposing, it's easy to overexpose images and run stuff. If you feel like you got something particularly good, do a couple of shots onto your pant leg. Give yourself a, a, that, that whole frame. I think most of these came with a plastic lens, depends on the model, but they do not look particularly good with flares. Um, it really just kind of skunks things up, so, so be advised of that. Estimate the shutter speed on this camera to be somewhere around a 60th of a second, and the f-stop to be somewhere between a 5, 6, and an 8, if you're planning to meter for these cameras. All right, go have some fun, and please post any cool photos you get out of this thing. Cheers.